when you saw this, what did you think? I think it looks, it reminds me of home, you know? You know that's exactly when I, when I, when Mike first opened it up here, I went, boy, that's familiar. Yeah. And even though I hadn't worked on that in, oh, I think the last session I probably did on that would have been in the mid 80s. You know, I also look at it and I think, boy, they did a much better job of dusting off the console than I was able well, to do. Well, I think every day. I think there's going to be two versions. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I, I noticed on here, as I look through all the different knobs and I'm, and I'm reminded of all the wonderful colors and everything like that, down here at the bottom, this is the the scribble strip or right. where you'd write the right. track yeah, that was yeah, on yeah. there. But <clears> I noticed <throat> that it says specifically number thirteen. It does. Why, why, why does it say number 13? Because if it's, if it's BS, <laughs> BSI, Bill Simsic Imaging, <laughs> or whatever, uh, 13's our lucky number, the whole family. Michael, oh, right myself, on. the whole, yeah. Many, many good things happen on the 13th. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah. good things are going to happen through this. Right. And then um, when you said um, Bill Simsic Imaging, it reminds me of your description of recording drums through the console, too, where you said you tried to make Drums sound cinemascope. Yes, that was the word. Of used. course, yeah. Very wide and wide and loud. <laughs> so, yeah. so let's see. So, if we look at this now, um, here's here's one thing. You see, at first when it when it first opened up, because it's not in a complete linear fashion, you know, like it was. It, it was like, oh, I had to get used to that for a second. And then I'm looking at this, and Mike says, "What's that?" And I goes. I don't even remember what the hell that was. With this whole module right this here? This module right here, yeah. Yeah, that and was... And I know I never used it. The gates, they were sort of at the top of the board. Right, yeah. And, and I think I mostly, like, left them in this setting as well, where they weren't really gating anything. Right. But I think the signal path ran through them, so it was an integral part of the sound. Uh, yeah, of the I'm board, pretty sure right? it did. Yeah, right. But, it, but, it, but I never, I never use that, I, that, to my knowledge. And the other thing is, I remember this trim only being active when it was in, you know, preamp mic, not in line position, and yet that still works in both line and, and uh, mic. I think it, I think it did work for both line and mic. It did. Yeah, and it did when I had it. So, and you know, it's possible that between the time right. you used it and the time I used it, it may have had a modification. Right, yeah, I, I don't remember it being in in the line end. But one of the things I did remember noticing as I was learning how the mic preamp worked was that the trim knob was pretty far from the mic preamp card. So it was like part of this feedback circuit or something uh -huh. um, inside the... Not, not right in the preamp yeah, itself. Yeah, it wasn't right in the preamp. So oh. the, the cable was able to come down to the front of the console where you could have the preamp knob. And, oh. But we'd go all the way back to the card where the actual preamp was. I never went under the hood. <laughs> it was, uh, I had to, I had to. You know, I, know. I had to figure a couple of things out. <laughs> yeah, when it, when, it, when it went up for sale just recently and I had all those pictures in the ad, it was like, I'm looking at it going, damn, all that was under there? That's interesting. <laughs> That's pretty wacky. It was, it was pretty wild. You know, the cool thing about opening up the console to see the inside of it too, was it, it was designed like a car hood. You'd have to lift up this metal thing and hook your fingers in and then you'd oh, lift right. up the whole thing, and right. then you there was a jack just like a car head. You'd yeah, jack right. it out, yeah. and then there were the just wires, and you just looked, and you were just like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's when I left the room. <laughs> <laughs> now, I still, to this day, don't remember what C and B mean. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I remember that cut myself. Cut and boost? Oh, cut and oh. boost. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, of course, we had the plus 10 right. and then the minus 10, so we could boost... The, uh, the frequencies. It's pretty basic. I mean, when you really look at it, it's pretty basic. It was pretty straightforward. And yeah. then, and then a, another interesting thing about the console, I don't know if this is, I imagine this is a, unique, was the fader uh, on the, um, the console technically was before the EQ. So if you had the fader down and the EQ was making some crazy noise or something like that. It was kinda, still there. It was still there in oh, the I mix. don't remember that. So I had to deal with that sometimes. But yeah. of course, you know, they were all... When like I first went to Criterion, and I first laid, eye, laid eyes on this board, I, I was immediately thought British because of the curvature right. of the, of the uh, faders. Yeah, that was a Tom Dowd design. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, I mean, however it got there, Tommy got me there. He did. That's what you said on <laughs> yeah. that podcast we right. did, yeah. Yep. And, th and I remember hearing that originally, I think his first idea for the, the curved fader was that it would be reversed because it was like flying an airplane. Right. Yeah. And everybody said no. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> no. Kind of like dust on the plot. I don't know. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. um, well, I'm very happy with the, with the results here. 
Yeah, so so let's see. So we had, um, maybe you guys already talked about this, but we've got a switch for the high frequency, which gives us the 10 kilohertz and the 8 kilohertz, which was always a fun one to go back and forth right. on. Do you remember some of the situations where you might have chosen 10 or 8 no. for the sound? I'm not, it, it it's was, too granular, it, right? Yeah, that, yeah, really. That was 50 years ago, number one. And everything with every every tune, every overdub, everything changed. Right. It was like boom, boom, boom. Okay, next. Boom, Sounds boom, boom. Sounds good. Move on. Change right? it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You know. So no, I don't remember any particular settings. Michael and I did run a few things through it, and I played around, you know, and got well. This is this would be my this would have been my snare sound. This oh, would have cool. been my foot sound. This would have been my bass sound and things like that. Yeah. And we put them up in the in the uh, storage storage locker up there. <laughs> That's great. I always love the fact that you refer to the kick drum as the foot. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Give me more foot. It reacted, even though I'm not twisting, you are. <laughs> but it reacted like I, I you know, audio wise, like I thought it would. So this was a really nice detail too. When you grab the fader and you bring it all the way down to the yeah. bottom, uh -huh. the light comes on. Oh, cool. The mute light. So you knew that the uh that this guy was muted in that in that moment. In, yeah, uh. It gave you that indicator, which was great. And there was a backlight on these guys too that would light them up slightly. You uh -huh. might get a little bit of a glow behind the plastic. Right. Um, or maybe that was from the light below just sort of coming up. Um, and they were just fun. And they, the way the fader was designed on the inside was a series of stepped resistors uh -huh. so that it was actually swiping across all the different connections. Okay. And most of the time you'd never, you wouldn't hear anything, but occasionally if I was on a bass and if I did a fast <laughs> zipper up and down, you'd yeah. get a, yep. you know, right, right, yeah. which is cool to hear. Yeah. And then let's see, what was the next things we had there? We had the, um, the wide and, wide narrow, and narrow band for the mid. Band, right. So you could really boost any part of the instrument. Yeah, exactly. You needed to. Yeah. And then um, how about this low, this 160? Do you remember that was something you switched between a whole lot? It depends on, you know, what it was like foot or, or bass or, or what I was, you know, what was I going for? Yeah. You know? you, is, that, is that kind of a way for us to think about it? Is like if it's the foot, it might have been 60. And if it's the bass, it might have been 100. I or? think it would have been the other way the around. The other way around. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. And then um, at the very bottom here, we had this 40 hertz cut. And then, or you could switch it to a 10 kilohertz cut. So I guess you, sometimes you just want to cut all that rumble below 40. Right. And I mean, you, of course, you guys were making records to go on vinyl, so you might have had some different things to think about than and we as, might as for as digital. A, what, low end? Yeah, just you yeah, might have had well, to be more considerate. Yes. I, I don't remember using that a whole lot, to be honest with you. I guess if, if cymbals were really harsh or something, maybe that would be nice to kind of smooth <laughs> True it out. True that, yeah. But good, it's, I'm glad it's back in, uh, about to be back in production. When you were mixing, um, would you ever use things like parallel compression or any of those kind of? Very little. In, in those days, I was very, very little compression. Would the, would the compression, the little compression happen in the recording side or the mixing side? Mostly on the mixing side. Mostly on the mixing yeah, side, all right. Definitely. And I guess with tape noise, you'd have to be considerate of. Yes. If you needed yeah. lots of compression. If I were if I were compressing anything on a basic track, it would probably be the bass and just knock it back, just keep it under control. Yeah. And maybe if it was a loud guitar, loud rhythm guitar or something, yeah. you know, would add a little crunch to it. Did Other it, than that, it, would, it was pretty much, I like to take things clean to tape and then fuck with it later. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Did, it, uh, did it help to have great musicians playing? Oh, always. Hire the pros and get out of the way. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> compressor there is, right? You bet. <laughs>